thank you. Thank you. That you are the name above all names. We thank you that there is no one or anything to be compared to you, O oh God. For you are the greatest of all the greatness that people could conceive in this world or in any other world. You are our God and we have come to commune with you. Bow your heads with me where you are. And let us ask the Lord right now to just rid us of any weight that would seek to weigh us down. Ask him to cleanse us, to purge us, to purify us so that we can worship. I know that some of us have had a full day, a hard day, a rough day, a tough day. Somebody got some news today that wasn't so good. But the goodness of God is not dependent on what is happening around us. The goodness of God is unaffected. He is good before we were, even while we are. And after we are no more in this literal life, He will still be good. All we have to do is to believe and we shall see the goodness of the Lord. So just bow your heads and ask him to search, to cleanse. Yes, ask him, say, Lord, here am I. I seek to worship you. I seek to commune with you. I seek to hear from you. Cleanse me. Unblock the cluttered places of my existence so that you will be free to come and commune with me. Forgive me of any trespasses, any wrongdoing, any evil thought, any resentment, any anger, any thought of hatred and disgust. Free me, O oh God. Fill me now with your peace through the power of your presence. In Jesus' name. And everybody say Amen. Amen. Welcome. This is Dr. Floyd Antonio, and I am representing the citadel we seek to be lights because a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid so my wife will tell you that we should let our lights shine so this evening we're glad that you have taken time out to join us from wherever in the world you are and i'm so happy that you are here with us i want you to know that throughout this meeting or any other meeting if you have comments questions uh, suggestions or anything prayer requests please email them into us at the citadel for real the citadel number four r-e-a-l at gmail.com or you could just log on to our website which is www the Citadel HQ for headquarters dot com. That's www.thecitadelhq.com and there you will find links to other social media applications. But let us know what's happening. And before we go any further, I would just like to let you know how very grateful we are at the Citadel for all of those from all over the world, from England in particular, Jamaica, the Bahamas and various parts of these United States for your your texts your your prayers your letters uh, uh, some of you have given financial gifts to the citadel and that we want to thank you for as well and you have made valuable suggestions one of these uh tuesday evenings we're going to be sharing some of the the reports the praise reports that we've got from people all over since we have embarked on these sessions so once again thank you so much you will not see my wife this afternoon because she's at the control but she sends her love and um, she loves you and we pray for you all the time thank you so much for joining with us this afternoon let's just worship the Lord in one more song before we talk and while we are talking writing texting chat with us on the on the Facebook let us know what's happening and of course you will find a telephone number on our website. You can also um, call in your, your prayer requests. Amen? But let's worship Him. Because this is what we were made to do, really. 
To worship you I live To worship you I live I live to worship you Anybody agrees with me? Let's sing it one more time To worship you To worship you I live To worship you I live I live to worship you this week go right ahead and thank him because he is a protector so thank him from where you are because he alone could have protected you and then praise him praise him if you know that he's worthy praise him for his mighty acts praise him with a timbrel praise him in the dance lift your hands and praise him lift your hearts and praise him praise him because he alone is God. All the other gods of the universe, they are idols. But Jehovah God made the heavens and the earth and all that is in it. Praise Him. And then bow down and worship Him. Worship Him. our minds, our souls, our spirits, in sweet surrender to you, O God, because you alone are worthy of us bowing down to worship. We will bow down and we will worship you. We will not worship any foreign gods. We will not worship any idols. For you made the heavens and the earth. Not only that, you sustain it with your righteous right hand. Before time was, you are. After time is over, you will still be because you are all sufficient. 
you are self-existing but you have chosen to form man and to bring him back to you after he has walked away so we bow down and we worship if you want to kneel you may kneel if you want to lay prostrate in case, prostrate in case you are at home do that if you just want to raise your hand in total surrender to him do that we call these meetings communication meeting because when we come we sing to him we praise him we talk to him we talk about him and when we meet at the citadel in a corporate setting we talk among ourselves about him about what he has done about what he can do about what he will do because this is our God and the Lord doesn't want me to preach to you today he just wants us to reason to for a little bit from this book I don't even think you necessarily have to turn there if you have been a part of any Christian or Christ following or any kingdom gathering one that subscribes to Jesus the Christ as Lord and Savior you will be familiar with this what the Lord has been talking to me about this little passage that has been well known for so long and actually it's Matthew chapter 6 and a few verses from 9 through to 13 from this book write it and then look at it the Lord has been ministering to my spirit and I will just listen to him in your presence because after we finish if you have any problem praying it should be gone it should be wiped away it was after that discourse with the pub with the Pharisee and the publican we spoke about them some weeks ago where one lauded himself and declared that he was much better the Pharisee than this publican and he praised himself but after he was finished with the verses from 1 through 8 of that same chapter Yeshua started a little lesson on prayer let's talk about it for a while this is how he started he said this is how you should pray when you go to pray this is how you should pray he says this is how you begin our father our father so we can't go to him to pray and think that it's just me myself and I our father means there is somebody else who belongs to this family other than myself it means I am not the only one it therefore means that if I go to him and just be thinking only of myself I am breaking the entrance into my prayer our that means your father my father your father my father our father now think about what that means let's get natural for a while father depending on which language you are you might say pata or papa father means source that's what father means source so our father means he is our source he is the source from which we come it is because of him why we exist did somebody say I don't quite figure out what you're talking about source let's think literally just for a moment I am a man I am a father I fathered children I couldn't do it by myself I had seeds and let's not get too biological and talk about sperms right now but by myself those seeds could not go they had to be planted in a soil our father 
our source and don't ask me if God is male or female because he has been proven to be male he has been proven to be female he's been proven to be all in all but source he is our father so if I'm going to our father what I'm saying I'm coming to you father and I know that my wife is also your child I know that you listening are also a child or children of my father it means I am your brother hello it means I'm your brother it means you are my sister so when I go to pray I can't just be thinking about me myself and nobody else no our father and depending on which version of this Bible you use it says which art or some versions say who art which means who dwells or who lives or who is enthroned in a particular place now our father who art who lives in heaven that's also biblical for we know that God is here there and everywhere but in the psalm he tells us that heaven he is his throne and the earth is his footstool so our father who art in heaven and we can go into philosophy and talk about what heaven is for there is instance there are instances on earth where people think they are in heaven when in fact they may be in hell but here we according to this bible god dwells in heaven that is where his throne is the earth is his footstool so when we come together on a tuesday evening in communication and in dialogue we are seeking to get heaven to for God to arise from his throne and bend down and kiss earth with the glory of his presence. So our Father, who art in heaven, listen to this one and let us remember it. Depending on the version, the King James Version says, Hallowed be thy name, which means holy is your name. Your name is set apart. Your name is set apart for what? Your name, O oh God, is set apart for all that is good, righteous, just, powerful, holy, and all the good, positive words that you could think of and more. Hello? Hallowed be thy name. Holy. If something is holy, it is set apart for a particular reason. So that is why when people have synagogues and places of worship, they will tell you that that's a holy place. I had some people in our house doing some work not so long ago in fact a little over two weeks and a dispute erupted between two of the workmen I was in another section of the house and I heard some language that got me really really riled up in my spirit and I'm thinking are these guys crazy I ignored the first one because I didn't want to be too holy you know but when I heard the word the second time, it was an expletive to be exact. I simply walked around and I said, excuse me, gentlemen, please watch your language. This is a holy house. It means it is set apart for holiness. It means that anything that God doesn't like is not supposed to be here. So if God doesn't like cursing, hatred, malice, war, grudge, name it name it it's not supposed holy means set apart so here's a question for you my brother my sister are you holy is your life set apart for christ what about your home is it okay to say that your home is holy how about your car do you find yourself worshiping and being very careful what happens in your car holy is your name so he's our father, he lives in heaven, holy is his name. Here is a declaration that is powerful. If he lives in heaven, it means that his kingdom is there because a, a king rules over a domain. But the next statement says, thy kingdom come king james some version says your kingdom come what you're doing you are making a declaration your kingdom come let it come it is come 
it is on earth. When Yeshua was here, every time he did a marvelous feat, especially against the kingdom of darkness, he would say, the kingdom of God has come. When the kingdom of God comes. You know, somebody asked me the other day, one of, my, one of our deacons, he said, he said, what is the kingdom? I am so glad he asked. I am not going to all of that. But I just tell you what the kingdom is. Think of it. This, where we are now, is the United States of America. They don't have a king. They have a president. They have a senate. And they have the house of parliament. It's a, it's a democracy. Correct? A king is a supreme being and he rules over a kingdom or a domain. Now, if the king is ruling over that domain, it means that what the king says goes. No, 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 I'm not talking about dictatorship as in the natural. Remember the king of whom we are talking about now is the just king. He is the God. So, so when we say your kingdom come, we are saying to him, we agree that your kingdom is come. And if your kingdom is come, what does that mean? Relax, let me explain simply put. God's kingdom is God's way of doing things. That's it. God's kingdom is God's domain. God's way of doing things. So therefore, if you don't know what God wants, you have to take this book and you will have to read it. It is a section of two testaments, old and new. It gives a clear insight as to how God wants us to behave, how Jehovah wants us to behave. If there is a kingdom, there are subjects. Now, I, I can't go into all of it because I'm just dealing with this particular prayer. And by the way, it's not the Lord's prayer. The Lord's Prayer is found in St. John chapter 17, but we'll get there another time. I prefer if you call this just the prayer, or the model prayer, or the Our Father prayer, because we're praying to the Father. Or we'll come, I, I see you get what I'm saying there. So, okay. So, what is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is God's rulership. It's God's way of doing things. So, when I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord, I enter his kingdom and I seek to spend the rest of his life, of my life, finding out how things operate in the kingdom of God. So let me tell you something. Can I brag a little bit? I am a dual citizen. I am a citizen of this world, this country, and I am a citizen of heaven. Now, unfortunately for those of us who are kingdom citizens, we get confused sometimes about which kingdom is supposed to be dominant in our lives. May I suggest that the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Jehovah, should be the dominant force. It should guide our operation in the earthly realm. So thy kingdom come, and if that happens, then we should also declare that God, your will is being done. Let it be done. I seek to have your will done. What you want to do, what you want to happen is what I need to happen, oh God. Do you know why a lot of us don't have our prayers answered? Because we're not praying according to God's will. If we search for his will, if we seek him, through prayer, through the word, through listening, through meditation, through practicing, we will hear and we will understand his will. And if we pray according to his will, then we won't have to say, Lord, if it be your will. We will just pray and God will cause it to happen. So Lord, I pray right now that you'd help us to pray according to your will so that when we pray, there is absolutely no doubt in my mind. No doubt in our minds that our prayers are being answered. Seek his will. Let his will be done. Let your will be done where? On earth. Where I am. 
in my area, in my country, in my city. Let your will be done in earth, even as your will is being done or is done in heaven. So this is the model. You don't have to pray it exactly like this. Your kingdom is come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. No, I love this part. Now it's time to make a petition. Can we ask our Father for something? So now, Lord, we're asking you to give us our daily bread. Bread? What is bread? Oh, we can buy a loaf of bread. Bread is bigger than just the literal loaf of bread. Bread means food, sustenance, food. Literally speaking, we cannot live without food for more than 40 days because the body will consume itself. We spoke about that some weeks ago. But just as how the body needs literal food, when we pray, we should ask for daily bread. Because if we seek first the kingdom and all his righteousness, we are asking, asking him for his bread. So what is his bread? When I was reading this Bible, and in several places I heard, Jesus the Christ said, I am the bread of life. Satan knew that. Do you know that now today? Satan knew that. That is why he tried to tempt Jesus. And say that if, if, if you are who you say you are, if you are the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. Jesus could have done that. You will agree because he did several miracles which involved bread. But think of him tonight as the bread of life. If you have him, you have life. When we do the Holy Communion, hmm, we eat the bread signifying his body which was broken for us uh, when we accept him we are accepting spiritual bread give us this day our daily bread every day we need you his word is our bread hello his word is our bread give give me a word today oh god my daily sustenance so i can live for by your word I will have victory by your word. Sickness cannot dwell in me. By your word, I live in victory. By your word, I am set free. Give us this day our daily bread. I am not so sure about this part. I'll be very honest with you, even though I have studied some theology and some philosophy and some apologetics. But it says, and lead us not into temptation. Can I give you my opinion? My opinion is that God doesn't lead people into temptation. And I agree with the apostle when he says, let no man that is tempted say he's tempted of God. Man is tempted only when he allows himself to be carried away by the lust. But this is what we're saying. Wait a bit, Lord. Lead us not into temptation. I believe he's saying that if I'm facing temptation, let it not get me, but let me get the better of it. That's my opinion. But don't you love this part? The songwriter says, Jesus is my deliverer. He said, but deliver us from evil. I could preach 10 sermons about evil right there. Hello. I could preach you 10 sermons about evil. Deliver us from evil. There are so many instances of evil that stalk the world, the earth right now, that it would make you shiver. Evil, evil. A man will have his wife. He loves her and out of nowhere, evil takes him over and he does a terrible thing to his wife or the wife does a, a terrible thing to his husband, to her husband. Sin, evil, the world is filled with evil. Can you tell me what in the world could cause one man to just look on another man who is helpless and harmless and just because he has a gun in his hand, just shoot him? 
Just like that. Eve stalks the world. And yes, it does not only happen when a white policeman shoots a black man. That is wrong, of course. It happens when a black man shoots another man, be that man white or black. Evil. Evil is evil regardless of the direction from which it comes. When there is a sector of a community or a society that goes out of its way to take away the blessing that should be shared among us. Our Father gives us blessing. I should get a chance to get it. You should get a chance. But no, I work hard for my blessing. And you think that you shouldn't work so hard for my blessing for your blessing so you wait until I work hard and I get my blessing you come and you shoot me down to get my blessing that is evil that is evil it's an example of that anything that forces you to do or to commit a sin or injustice is sin against God so lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil why can we pray this prayer why can we say these things because this is it the kingdom that we are talking about is the kingdom of God. If it is the kingdom of God, it belongs to God. If the kingdom is his, what else belongs to him? The power. So when he speaks, it's done. He blows his breath and things happen. He lifts his hand and the earth trembles because the power belongs to him. So if the kingdom is his, and if the power is his, why is it when he does awesome things because you pray or because I pray? Why is it when he works a miracle because you call and you ask Dr. Floyd to pray and I was blessed enough to pray on your behalf? Why is it when God answers that prayer and works a miracle for you, instead of giving him the glory, I take the praise for myself? No, the kingdom is his. The power is also his. Therefore what? The glory. The glory. Lift him up. Exalt him. The true nature of who he is. All of that belongs to him. That's his glory. It's his beauty. It's its awesome power. It belongs to him. And guess what happened? It was so before our time. It is so today. It will always be so. When we recognize and we could pray then we will not just open our mouth and say like this our father who shout in heaven lord be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for then is the kingdom power and the glory forever and ever amen and we are finished we just rattle off some words do we understand so my father is your father he's in heaven the earth is its footstool Hmm? His name is holy, set apart for all that is good and righteous. Huh? His kingdom is come as of the time of Jesus Christ. That his kingdom came, his kingdom is here, his kingdom lives within us right now through Jesus Christ. Hmm? And therefore, may his will be done on earth, even as it is being done in heaven right now. Huh? Lord, give us this day our daily bread. Give us your food, give us your sustenance. Keep us. Hmm? And lead us not into temptation. But here's one part that we forget. He said, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of all the wrong things. Forgive us our trespasses. Everybody likes to be forgiven. But do you like to forgive? Everybody likes to be forgiven. But do you like to forgive? Forgive us our trespasses as we Forgive the people who trespass against us, those who offend us, and lead us not into temptation. But, O oh God, deliver us from evil, for the kingdom is yours, the power is yours. Therefore, the glory belongs to you, not only now, but forever and ever. And when you say, Amen, what are you saying? You're saying, I agree. That's what you're saying. So Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, as your people all around the world begin 
to pray, oh God. I pray, oh God, for us, for every man, every woman, every boy, every girl under the sound of this voice right now. May we recognize, oh God, that you are in heaven. And the earth is your footstool. May we recognize, oh God, that you are holy. May we declare and affirm that your kingdom come, oh God, and may we prophesy, promote, live, declare that your kingdom come and that your will be done on earth, even as it is in heaven, where the triune being lives, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, not separate, but one, oh God. May your will be done on earth, even as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Give us this day. Not just me, my brothers, my sisters. This day, our sustenance, our daily bread. Literally, physically, but above all else, spiritually. And forgive us our trespasses, oh God, because we sin every day, oh God. And we forgive. I forgive anybody who hurt me and trespass against me and said bad things against me. And lead us not into temptation. May we not face undue temptation, temptation that gets us, but may, may we overcome every temptation, even as Jesus has overcome. And deliver us from evil. So that we can be bold and strong and confident that you are the mighty deliverer. For God, we agree right now, your people agree that the kingdom is yours. The kingdom is yours. We are yours. We are your people. We are your sheep. You created us. The kingdom is yours. We bow to your power, O oh God. We declare your glory, O oh God. Right now. Right now. And we declare that the glory belongs to you forever. So in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I speak to that man, that woman, that boy, that girl who is suffering in desperation, who is facing injustice, that one who is overcome with hatred and resentment, oh God, fill that void with your love and with your peace and your favor. I speak to that questioning heart right now who is wondering about your existence because you're thinking too literal and too physical, oh God. Break through that void right now, oh God. Soften that callous that cold stone heart with a touch of your love, oh God. And I pray healing right now for that sick brother. Yes, that sick brother, that sick son who has done so well in life, gone through school, gone through university, got the high degree for they say you should study but has been infiltrated by the evils of this world, messing with the high places of the mind. We curse that illness right now in your son, Father. We curse, yes, sir. Go ahead and pray for your son right there. Yes, yes, you too, ma'am. You have a son who is suffering. Yes, they, they give it all kinds of strange names, but it is evil attack on your son. Curse, we curse that spirit. That mental interruption. We expel that demon right now. And we speak deliverance and healing right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Yes, ma'am. So you have a daughter too? Go ahead. You pray for your daughter. Yes. Open your mouth. Make it loud. Call her name in the name of Jesus. And speak healing. We speak healing of the mind today in the name of Jesus Christ. For every man, woman, boy, and girl, for not everyone will necessarily behave like a demented person. But so many others walk around as if they are smart, they are well learned and well versed in lie. They cannot even reason. So, Lord, protect our minds from the evil ones, O oh God. For if our minds is stay, if our minds are stayed on you, we will experience peace. So we speak peace to your house. Speak in the peace in the workplace right now, yes. And right where you are in your house, the Spirit wants me to tell you to just do your hands like this. Just rub them together in your house right here, yes. Mm -hmm. You're sick, just rub your hands together like that. 
Yes, it sounds crazy. I, I, it's not me. Just rub them together. They are beginning to feel warm right now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Just breathe on those hands and see God breathing through you on those hands. And right now, just touch the part of your body right now that is healing, that, that is hurting, that is... Yes, just touch that part. Yes, yes. You may look or feel strange. Touch the part of your body. Is it your knee? Is it your waist? Is it your hip? Is it your elbow? Is it your breast? Is it your... Yes, is it your throat? Uh, is it your ears? Where is it? Touch the part of your body. Yes. And speak to it. Say, body, in the name of Jesus Christ, I am commanding you to be healed. And I am choosing to believe God is the healer right now in my house, in my car, in my workplace. And no lie that the enemy will tell me will change that. Lord, I thank you for healing me. Thank you. I thank you for healing my son. I thank you for healing my daughter. Thank you for healing my husband. Thank you for healing my wife. Thank you for healing me. Go ahead and just pray for your country with a minute and then we're going to close. Pray for your country. Yes. Pray for your state, your city. Yes, we want you to pray. Ask God to do something for these United States if you are here. Ask Him to do something for Jamaica if you are there. My friends in the Bahamas, in Trinidad, my Haitian friends, pray for your country. All the way in Africa, pray for the African countries. Yes. Pray for all these states and territories of the United States. Hmm? We need you. Go ahead. You ask God to intervene. Yes, Lord. You, work for you know about your country more than I do. But God knows about your country more than you do. So pray for your country. And now, Father, we ask you that you would give your divine power protection to your people especially in the face of this malady that they call corona you've been protecting millions of people protect them even now even more there are still millions who are positive i ask oh god that you would work in their body systems yes, so that they become immune yes. to this malady yes, Jesus. and oh Lord we lift our hearts to you right now and we ask you to pour out your healing yes. just pour out healing on those who are in the hospital pour out of your healing oh God just pour out pour out healing pour it out yes. pour it out on those who believe in you we ask you to pour it on those who don't believe in you for you are the God who causes rain to fall on the just and on the unjust. But let your healing be a catalyst for their thinking so that they will be turned from darkness to light. We just thank you now, Lord, and we bless you. Again we say, Lord, yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, and yours is the glory. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Just tell him thanks for where you are. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you've been so awesome. In that house, you are awesome. In this house, you are awesome. Yes. There is none like unto you, O oh God. You. And we bless you today. You. We just thank you, Father. And we ask, O oh God, that right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, as we are about to end these moments together with you, that we will go to our other activities cognizant of your constant presence. We thank you and we bless you, you. in Jesus' name. Just want to thank you once again for spending this time with us. We do ask you to 
share this message this time with others especially those who are not able to get onto Facebook we will release uh, another version on YouTube and WhatsApp so you can get to your phone you can get it to them but encourage somebody have a watch party send it to them and encourage them to pray on behalf of the leaders the members of the Citadel and the well wishes the supporters including all who watch us constantly this is Floyd Antonio saying thanks on behalf of all of us from the Citadel including my wife the deacons the officers thank you for joining Citadel God is gonna keep on blessing you just keep on believing Amen. Mm -hmm.